All right, welcome to Cupcakes in Kona with Frodo and Gollum. Uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Frodo. My pleasure. So Frodo is the 2008 Olympic champion. He's switched up to long course triathlon now. He's racing in Kona for the first time. Um, but let's just go back a little bit of a background. You're originally from South Africa, but you made the move over to Germany. What was sort of behind that? Well, sort of like from Germany, then to South Africa, and then back to Germany. Just couldn't decide really. Yeah. So that was a family, a family thing. Yeah. Um, Mum and Dad went there. We actually went there on holiday. Sort of really liked the place, and then um, went down there. Early '90s. Went to school there. Sort of that's where my whole sporting background started, and yeah, got into triathlon. So in non-English speaking countries, yarn is a masculine name, <laughs> but in South Africa. Maybe it's an English speaking country. Um, Afrikaans. Afrikaans as well, but did you cop any flack for having like a woman's name? Did it make you tougher? Um, you know what? It's been a tough last few months because it's really only in America that everybody spells my name with a Y and U A N or something like that. And um, in Australia, a fair bit, everybody calls me Jan. And then I'm like, I still didn't get it until there's some ad, like there's something like not happy Jan. I think it's it's like a phone book ad or something and Jan's a chick. Let's cut to the chase. 364 days of the year, you look like you're at race weight. There's obviously one day of the year where you might have a blowout and tuck into some German sausage. Are you on some kind of diet or what's going on? Like you just look shredded, period. Yeah, I like to um, like to cut the calories. I have, a, I have a scale with me wherever I go. Pocket calculator. Um, just to guesstimate calories and um is that an app have you got an app yeah um it's actually i had i had a, a german friend design it for me and um you can just sort of put in what you have and if i weigh it then i sort of know how many calories it's got and how many i use during the day mm -hmm. so my little uh pro tip for uh, dieting is when you're out at a restaurant and the server asks you if you want dessert you, you take your head and you just look to your right and then you look to your left and you just repeat that <laughs> until he, he wanders off. You've got a coffee shop called Fratissimo which is in Germany, right? Uh, it's not a shop yet, it's sort of working on it. Hopefully one day it'll be a shop, but kind of like a full-time job with a triathlon. It doesn't work too well. I actually uh, have a few barista skills as well which I learned off YouTube. And uh, I prepared one a little earlier. Sample that. You, you smell different on different nostrils. You should try that. It's a, it's a little bitter. It's it's probably just the cone of bean. It's a it's a dark roast. It's an acquired taste. Oh. Yeah, I can tell the I can tell the lemongrass now that you say. It. Uh, it's definitely some lemongrass in there. Yeah, it hits you. So, how did you get the? Um, how did you come up with that name in the first place? Um, Fratissimo is uh, Daniel Unger, specialty guy um, uh, who won 2007 Worlds in Hamburg, and uh, he's a good, good mate of mine. And um, yeah, he always called me Fratissimo, and um, it just sort of sounds like a coffee brand, even. So we decided to name. The coffee for this month. Mm -hmm. 2014 you've had a pretty successful year and you've clearly got a pretty good performance bonus structure in place because you've had first at Auckland, Oceanside, St George, you're narrow, narrowly the runner-up in a world champs 70.3 a couple of weeks ago and you are your third in uh, your debut at Ironman Frankfurt with a smoking fast run of 243. How have things been going towards Kona this year? Um, it was uh, going really good actually and, until I got here. Um, I think the moment I got off the plane that humidity wall just hit me. It was, it was a tough first week for sure. Um, but it's been coming good and um, you know, just uh, day by day adapting, time change, 12 hours. Sort of underestimated every other race I flew in two or three days before and now I'm uh, lucky to be here two and a half weeks out so I've got a bit of time. So you're spearheading the, the new wave of ITU boys who are have pretty much moved up in uh, crushing dreams of the current long course fraternity and um, 
you know, this race can often be run on the, the run here in uh, Kona. You've got the run speed, you've been crushing the run splits in uh, 70.3s with, you know, 110s and you win a 110 on a hilly Montreux Blanc course. He's quietly confident that, you know, it's going to come down to the run here. Um, I don't think so because there's, there'll be a lot of runners. There's, there's some really, you know, look at the whole entire Spanish team. Really, they're all they're all smoking fast runners, um, and it's just it's not a fast course. Like it is a fast course, but with these temperatures, I went for an 8k run yesterday and and just sort of tried to go a little bit under race pace. Came home and thought I'd done 20. Um, it's just that sort of pacing that's going to be tough for me, but um, we'll see. So how do you think it's going to play out? Obviously, there's a few guys who their their ace card up their sleeve is the bike, like Andrew Starkowitz, um, uh, your countryman Sebastian Kinlay. Are you going to let them go up the road? Are you just going to play it by air? Will it be premeditated that you don't want to tell us about, or how do you approach that? Well, the thing is, the one thing is what you want to do, and the other thing is what you can do at the time. Obviously, there's some guys you can let go because. They have a set of hiking boots in T2, um, but some of the quick guys, they, you know, they actually also run fast. So um, it's got to be, yeah, definitely decided on the day. See what what goes. And on the bike, do you do you ride off feel, or do you um, do you go off power, or do you just go with the attacks? Like, do you, you know, do you use a power meter basically? In German, of course, I run a power meter. <laughs> All right, I threw the bait out to the slow twitch people, um, asked for a few questions. The first question is, are you interested in racing Roth as it's a German race? Oh yeah, for sure. There's two big races in Germany. It's probably only a handful of big races um, outside of Kona in Ironman, and, and definitely Roth is tradition. You know, some, some awesome races have happened there, so I'm keen to race there one day. Is your height an advantage or disadvantage? I guess you know no different unless you want to try a day in my shoes and be a little shorter, but what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's much of a much. It's like, what are you going to do? Of course, on the bike, it's a disadvantage because your whole surface area is bigger. Then my dad's theory is always that you've got more surface area to cool down. So, well, I don't know. It's just talking pretty, I guess. Yeah. We just touched on it before. The ITU boys who are moving up, you're one of them. Are you worried about any of the uh, future ITU boys stepping up, the Brownleys, for example? Oh, it's my favourite question. I love it. Um, it's a different ball game, so we'll see when they get there. A few people want to know about your running style. A few people are critical. How would you sort of describe your running style? Super stylish. It's just, you know, 110, 109. Is that any good? It's okay. Alright, I'll work on it. Want a serious answer? Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Horse-sized duck for sure. I was always the one to fight the baddie, you know, like Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, a computer game and stuff. And dude. Take him down. Take him down. Is there anyone that you're going to sort of focus on that's, you know, got a performance history here where they've, they've nailed it? Oh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of champions here, but there's... Um, Everybody's talking about you know the guys that have done that well this year and the guys that have come through and had great performances. I'm honestly, I'm more worried about the guys that haven't done that well this year that blew everything apart. Look at Eniko Lanos last year; he he just blew everyone out of the water, and then he didn't have a good race in Kona. Whereas this year he's had a long preparation, and I reckon he could be good. Is there much pressure from uh, the German media? Obviously. Um Obviously, this race has been dominated by the Australians for a little while now. Um, for that top spot, do you feel any pressure from home at all? Um, yeah, obviously, there's a few people shouting for it. You know, we don't have a too bad history ourselves, and um, it's one of those things that I'm coming here as a rookie, so I'll make sure I enjoy it. And you know, that whole sort of hype around it, and first time this, and all those sorts of things. I mean, that's yeah, of course, it's it's the hype. Like everybody's going to talk about it, but. Really, you have to put it together on the day, and there's, like you said, a handful of guys who can do it. Yeah. No Olympic medalists have medal here. You've obviously you're the Olympic champion from 2008, um, and the, the other stat is four men have won this race on debut. Do you sort of factor any of that in? 
Uh, not really. I, I tried to do that before, to be like the first Olympic champion to win a world title. Um, yeah, it didn't work too well for me, so I'm trying to sort of stick to the baby step. What would be more uh, important, uh, a kind of victory, you know, comparing a kind of victory to an Olympic victory? Oh, it's a hard one to compare, sort of, I reckon, you know, Kona is a bit like the Wimbledon of our sport. So it's sort of like within triathlon, it's massive, but you know, internationally, the Olympics is just the biggest thing. So um, there's no way I'd hand back my medal for a for a win here, but you know, I still want one pretty bad. Mm -hmm. All right, so in uh, Ironman and triathlon, especially, there's a lot of um, a lot of families who have lost a loved one to uh, or become a widow of the sport, so to speak, who are just so uh, so entwined in the sport and and lost. Um, I brought Jan's wife Emma Snowstall along here just to talk to her a little bit about how they balance their relationship and are able to get it done. So, you know, have you got any sort of tips to wives or husbands or anything? Oh, I mean, I would say you you know how you need to know how to use the washing machine. Dishwasher comes in really handy. Um, and, and cook, you know, I think it's like a baby, you know, you, 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 there's a time where they need to feed and you put them down and need to have a nap, but I mean all that other stuff in between, I don't really know what goes on. Does he require much, uh, much uh, walking or anything like that, you know, like do you need to get him out and about? Oh, it, it definitely, you know, he needs some encouragement at times, you know, you've got to coax them out and, and do some normal things and, and uh, have a bit of a life, but I mean, they're always complaining, they're so tired and they need a rest and not be on their feet. I mean, you know, sometimes it does come across a bit whingy, but we, you know, we get by. I think, you know, I think he understands sometimes we've got to be, a, you know, normal people, but... It is yeah. a hard knock life. So, um, has watching Yarn race, has that inspired you to ever want to do a triathlon? Um, you know, I, I, I like CrossFit. I mean, I, I've really been trying to work out and, um, and you know, get more muscular, but that triathlon, I mean, I, like I said, I don't really know what he does. I think you start with some run or something, and they say they go for a swim in the ocean, but I think they just go and look at the dolphins and stuff, so I'll, I'll stick to my crossfit for now. And if you never really swam as a kid, it's kind of hard to get into it, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I know, like, that front crawl and stuff, but that's about it. So what's your role going to be on race day? Will you be up early preparing a meal? Or uh, are you allowed out of the kitchen to come and watch? How does that sort of work? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've gotten pretty good at the coffee. I'm allowed to do that now. So, um, you know, there's, there's typically a coffee involved in the morning. And, but I'll make sure that, you know, everything's ready and he's gone and he has his team. And, um, you know, if I finish my chores for the day, then I'll, I'll make it out onto the race course and I have my little pom-poms and stuff and give a cheer. All right, Jan, thanks for the chat, mate. And thanks, Emma, for uh, those those uh, wife pro tips there. They were great. Some good advice there as well. Um, help yourself to a cupcake. <laughs> Are they good? Mm -hmm. They're good, but you need to go with some with the, with the German. This is what we call German coconut water. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah, sour cold. It's good for you. If you're eating that, what does your pet rabbit eat? Mm. Well. Mm -hmm. Alright, good luck next weekend and uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for you. Awesome. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, bye. You reckon this is more to find? Or, or maybe here. We'll go, we'll go carve. Oh, damn. <laughs> What's that there? What do you got there? Mm. This is the German, the real power, which I can't <laughs> open it. I can't open it. <laughs> I need it first.